clothed in garments white, I will not blot out His name from the book of life. He who overcomes, He will not be hurt by death. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Faith is the victory that has overcome the world. If we endure and keep the faith unto the end, we shall be. will be a pillar in my house He will have my name And from my presence not go on He who overcomes And keeps my works unto the end I will give Him power over every nation Faith is the victory that has overcome the world If we endure and keep the faith unto the end we shall be saved Faith is the victory that has overcome morning 31st of december 2018 this day is wow leaving fast isn't it? wow this and this is this year is almost gone it's gone by so fast i know it. i know it. Hmm. you know sometimes when you order stuff on the internet they send you ads and this one place sent an ad uh it was a special free shipping for the rest of the year <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was funny hmm. and uh since today's since the 31st, today's 31st you know, <laughs> free shipping for the rest of the year but anyway praise the lord he's he's so good he brought us all through this year amen he, and we came through victorious we have this day to go and we know we're going to be victorious because we're in christ and we have the faith that we believe amen mm -hmm. and we trust in god god never missed a beat never missed a step hallelujah there were times we missed a beat we missed a step but guess what? The Lord forgive us. Hallelujah. He forgives us when we confess our sin. Mm -hmm. If we grumble, complain, murmur, anything like that, or anything at all, whatever the case may be, God says, I will forgive you when you confess it and repent for it. Hallelujah. And to repent, once again, what does it mean? It means to have a change of mind. It means to turn and go the mm -hmm. other way. That's right. So if you're tempted again to get angry or you're tempted again to murmur you don't you say no i refuse to murmur i'm not going to murmur about this situation i'm going to trust god hallelujah amen. Amen, amen amen and i'm going to believe his word praise god let's pray father thank you for bringing us all through 2018 
to this last day. Lord, we bless and praise your holy name that you have plans for 2019, Lord, for your people. You have plans to exalt your son in our lives, Father. Oh, Father, I pray that we would not get in the way of what you want to do in us and through us by the power of Jesus Christ, your holy, precious son, through the precious blood and the Holy Ghost. Oh, Father, let us be subservient children. Let us be bond slaves of you, knowing that you have a plan this year for your people coming up. Oh, God, your word is true. Help us to remember, Lord, your great and awesome faithfulness. And your great and awesome faith unto your children. Hallelujah. Hope and love. And let us earnestly contend this year coming up. This day and this year coming up. Earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. And let us look at that today, Lord. And then let us be faithful unto you. Let us keep our focus upon you walking with you in white oh hallelujah we pray for the saints lord we pray for those who support the work here lord that you've chosen not many at all lord but special chosen by you god we pray for them that you will touch them today in such a mighty 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 way that you fill them to overflowing with your joy oh god hallelujah your joy, Lord Jesus, that joy of the Lord that is our strength. The joy of the Lord that fills us, hallelujah, when we walk in obedience to you, Lord, hallelujah. Fill them up today, O God, and bless them, Lord, exceeding, hallelujah, abundantly above all they can ask or think. And to all those who write, Lord, hallelujah, that haven't given, that's okay, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because we trust in you, Lord. We don't lean upon the arm of the flesh. We trust in you. We thank you for them as well, Father. We ask you to touch them today. Fill them to overflowing with your almighty power and faith, O God. Strengthen them, O God, in the inner man. All of us, O God, all of us. We ask this for all the body of Christ. That we will be obedient to you, Lord. We will be obedient to you in 2019, Lord. That we will love you and praise you and worship you in every circumstance, in every trial, in every testing, Lord. Hallelujah. And that we will know your word is true when we pray. Lead us not into temptation. You will not lead us into temptation, Lord. Hallelujah. And if we're ever being tempted, Lord, strong temptation comes our way. It's not you leading us there, Lord. It's the enemy. It's the world. It's the flesh. It's the devil, Lord. Help us to recognize that, Lord, and submit to you. Submit to you. Resist the devil and watch the devil flee. And crush that serpent dragon under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise his holy name. God is faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. He is. He's so faithful. We're in the book of Jude today. Jude is one chapter. 25, I think, powerful verses. Maybe 26. I'm going to tell you right now, this is a powerful book. And we're going to look at it. We're going to talk about earnestly contending for the faith today. And it's vitally important. 25 verses. That we earnestly contend for the faith. Once delivered unto the saints. I'm going to begin reading in verse 1. Let's just go through this. and <coughs> We're going to be also in John Gill's commentary today. He's got some good things to say yeah, about this book. And about the Christian's walk. And how we are to be. I mean saints. Listen. <coughs> More preface here. Listen. This world today in 2018, going into 2019, is a politically correct world. They have decided these types of actions and speaking is wrong, okay? When you raise your voice, that's wrong. You shouldn't raise your voice, okay? But the people that say that, it's okay for them to raise their voice. But not for you or me because we're speaking the truth. Right, right. You have to keep your voice low. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. Okay? Uh, this is how this world that we live in, politically correct. Mm. They call, the Bible says, they say that evil is good and good is evil. Yep. That's, That's what, what they, they do today in this world. Mm -hmm. But we're here today 
and throughout 2019 to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Hallelujah. We are the saints. Okay? This faith has been delivered to us by the Holy Ghost. Given to us. We know the truth of the gospel. We know the truth of God's word. We know the importance of God's word. Amen? Hallelujah. God didn't call us to understand and, and try to figure out every single verse in the Bible. God called us to believe the word. And just trust him. And read his word and study and show ourselves approved. A workman rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what God wants us to do. As Christians. Take up our cross daily and follow him. Deny ourselves. Oh, we saw that last night. In that clip we saw. Surrender totally. Surrender totally. Totally. Surrender totally. It's simple. But it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's simple. Mm -hmm. And when you do it, you find out it's simple. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got chills all over me. <laughs> I'm telling you. When you do it, you find out how simple it is. See, the, the crucified life Jesus walked. Why did he do it? Because he loved the Father. You pray today. If, if you know you're not walking a totally crucified life, you know, hey, I got more surrendering to do. I got to, you know, do this or do that. Or, well, you know, by the Holy Ghost, he's, he's, he's talking to you. He's showing you things in your heart. You say, Lord, do what you got to do. Make me to see that it's simple. See? Give me the courage just to let it all go to you, Lord. Everything about me. Right? Mm -hmm. Praise God. You got anything you want to add on the preface? <laughs> Come on now. Praise God. I mean. I, I was reading about this and I just have a whole lot in my heart about it. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, you'll get to it, right? Yeah, Is that what right, you're saying? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God, man. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Oh. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. Servant. What does that mean? Servant. Look, look at this word now. The servant of Jesus Christ. Now we think about ourselves as being a servant. I'm a servant of Jesus. Okay, look up that word, servant. Verse 1. What does it say? Slave. A slave. Okay, a <laughs> oh, slave. Oh, oh, oh. That interferes with freedom. me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. That's <laughs> right. It interferes with freedom. Okay. A liberty. slave. Yeah, liberty. <laughs> See? Look, a slave doesn't have freedom at all a slave has freedom to do what his master says to do exactly you see and a good slave does what his master says to do and in the old testament it's recorded that when you have a slave god said seven years he'll serve you and at the end of seven years if that slave wants to stay with you because you treated him well he's like one of the family See what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're not beating your slave, okay? You're treating him well. If he wants to stay with you, you take him and put him by the threshold in the door jam and you put it all through his ear. That's a sign that he's yours forever and he'll, he'll never leave, see? He'll never leave. Okay? See, that's what I want. I want the Lord to put that all right there. See, I, I believe he's done that in my life. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Put that all in my ear because I am his slave. I want to do what he tells me to do. Well, he's put it in your heart. He pierces our heart with that. You know, just like in um, Hind's Feet on High Places. Right. When he places that love in our heart. Yeah, the he, thorn of love. Yeah. The seed of love yeah, is a he thorn. He puts it deep. Deep. You know. Yeah. Where it's there's an imprint, there. and it hurts like everything yeah. when it goes in, yeah. but then it starts growing, and mm -hmm. oh, you can feel the love, mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. You can feel the energy and the strength of the gospel, Hallelujah! The truth of God's word. You know, uh, the Lord said that. What does He say? You know, what he, what did He do? He was servant. Servant. He mm -hmm. was a slave of the Father's will, man. Yeah, all and the way. so Jude the servant. Of Jesus Christ and brother of James to them that are sanctified, sanctified. to them that are consecrated right. purified right. by God the Father and preserved in Jesus the, Christ in Jesus Christ and called and called and that's us as well mm. mercy unto you and peace and love 
be, be multiplied. multiplied. Now look at look at preserved there in verse two. Look at that. To guard from loss or injury. Okay. See, you're preserved in Jesus to guard from loss or injury. Now sometimes if you're swinging a hammer, you'll hit your thumb. Bam! Ah, oh, that's an injury on your thumb. Okay. But it didn't really injure your faith, did it? Okay. Huh? Did it? Or if you're being persecuted for the faith because you are a Christian, you're speaking the truth, and somebody slaps you upside the head, well, that hurt your head, might have injured your, your head right there. But did it injure your faith? Mm -hmm. uh, did it injure your faith? I said, no. See, it strengthened your faith. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's what happens Hallelujah. over there in persecution. In India, uh, China, Indonesia. They are strengthened. Yeah, strengthened in, in the, the spiritual faith. man. That's right. You know. They're preserved. Mm -hmm. Their faith is preserved. Hallelujah. See? Oh, praise God. In Jesus Christ and called. Okay, verse 2 again. Mercy <coughs> unto you. Peace, <coughs> peace and love. Be multiplied. Be multiplied. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 3 of Jude, chapter 1. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort, exhort you, you that ye should earnestly contend, contend for, for the, faith, the faith which was once delivered unto, unto the, the saints. saints. So oh, he's hallelujah. exhorting them. He, he's calling them, invoking them right. to earnestly, earnestly contend, contend for, the faith. for the faith. Contend for to right. struggle for. To struggle for. Actually, that's like it's like there's a warfare involved in right. contending for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. Now here's Webster on on contend. Okay, contend to strive or to strive against, to struggle in opposition. Okay. Now, does that sound like today's world? Mm. Oh, you can't say that, John, Sharon. You can't you can't talk like that to these people. They say they're Christians, they love Jesus, yet you see in their life they reject the crosswalk, they reject this, they reject that. The whole world. The, yeah, they reject it. Yeah. See? So you earnestly contend for the faith. Why? For the glory and honor of God Almighty. Not that you'll be recognized, but that His name will be lifted high. Hallelujah. But what does it say here, the definition? Struggle in opposition. Right, in opposition. It doesn't mean you chum up with this deal. With the other people right. that are not wanting to go the way of the cross. Say so you don't have to do that anymore. And that's a total lie. That's right. That's not what Jesus said. That's right. That's a different spirit saying that kind of thing. Jesus said if we seek to save our life, the word life there right. is your soul. Then we're going to lose it, but he who we loses, but he who loses his soul, his life, for my sake, gains it. Right. You have it. We have to recognize. The Lord tells us to try the spirits. <laughs> you know how oh, you try the spirits. Sister. Preach it, sister. By the word of God, yes. is what's being said uh, line up with the word of God, or is it totally against the word of God? Right. See, because Jesus said, what did he say? In this world, you will have tribulation. tribulation. Amen. That's right. Okay. The whole time Jesus spoke of the cross walk, take up your cross daily and, and follow, follow me. me. Amen. Amen. Did he amen. say, you're going to be sliding through this earth without no problems? No. Well, you know what? When people go back from the way of the cross... They might have an easier way. Yeah. Yeah, they sure might have an easier way. And then they're thinking, well, good, I'm doing, I'm going the right way. No, you're not. Because our Savior told us, in this world you will have tribulation. tribulation. But be of good cheer. Yeah. I have overcome the world. Take up your cross God. and follow me. That's if you right. don't, you're not. My disciple. And taking up our cross, it means to deny ourselves. Yeah, and whatever thing the Lord allows in our life. Put others first. To bear. That's right. We receive as he received the cross that he was crucified on. We also are to receive the cross that Jesus gives us. 
So there's going to be an opposition, a struggle against that falsity that's right. being spoken. That's right. See, there's going to be a, a, a deal going on. Earnest efforts. What's that, that second one? Up further. Up further than that. To strive. To use earnest efforts to obtain or to defend and preserve. Right. See, we're not going to be chumming up with that kind of uh, doctrine or belief. We're going to be in opposition to it. Amen. Amen. Because it's not the truth. We're going to contend against that for the truth. See? Look at number three of contend. To dispute earnestly. To strive in debate. Okay? Now, when Paul said about debate, foolish questions, okay, they, they don't gender anything of the faith. Stupid and foolish questions, okay? Right. Like, I uh, wonder if the fallen angels really, you know, went in unto the women or whatever. You know, those are foolish questions. They're they're not going to help you increase your faith at all. Anything like that, okay? But to stand for the truth, okay? You stand for the truth. Just speak the Just truth. Just speak the truth. There's Amen. no debate Amen. about the Amen. truth. Amen. Amen. You know, there's no debate about the truth. But People, if somebody's coming yeah. against you, you do not move off of your stand. Right. right. Okay. You're striving in that debate in the truth, you see. And eventually they have to shut their mouth and go the other way. Yeah. And because the light dispels the darkness. Hallelujah. Yeah. But you, you know, a lot of times <coughs> in this user friendly church of today and in this society of today yes. that that is you know, has so dumbed down the people of God to the point where they don't speak the truth. They don't stand up like they should. And they want to make sure they're not offending anybody. Well, there is an offense concerning the cross. Jesus said so. You know, that goes totally against society and what they believe. And, and God's people just need to know that. That's right. Okay? We're walking in the right way, the right path. We have to understand the way that it truly is and not be deceived into thinking it's some other way. That's right. Jesus told us in advance. I've right. said it before. He already told us what was going to happen. How we would be treated. That's right. How, what we would come up against, That's even right. with family. That's right. You know, we spoke about that last week. Your adversaries will be those in your own family, he said. Mm -hmm. Adversaries, adversaries, they are against the truth and against God and what he says. Now, that's a hard deal, a hard saying, but that's just what... Jesus has already told us would happen. And there can be no fellowship between truth and error. There's, there's going to be a clash. There's going to be an opposition. There cannot be anything other than that. And we just need to understand that. Amen. You know, God tells us, come out of her and be separate. That's right. Well, if there's error going on in the family, you cannot fellowship with that. You have to come out of that. That's right. And that means come out of the company right. of right. your family, your relatives, whoever it is. Come out of the company of. That's right. Amen. That's what that means. Amen. That's right. And the Lord says in his word that you are basically to shun them so that they will realize they're in error and, and turn around. That's right. Now, that's what the Bible says. That's if right. we do any other thing, it, it's going to bring things into our life that that's we don't right. want. That's right. It's going to bring, uh, actually, it will bring a type of judgment into our life. Right. Things will happen that wouldn't normally happen if we were separated. Like Jesus tells us to do. Right. And it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to do that. But you have to do that. That's right. 
Amen, amen. And I guarantee in this time we are in and entering into in 2019, God's people really better get grounded in the truth of this fact that God has said to come out of her, my people. Come out. You don't fellowship with error. You are not to be in the company of error. And I don't care who it is. You are not to be. So, you know, this is, this is so important. So important. There's a cutoff time. And the Lord says, I just read it this morning in Isaiah. I called and I called and I called and I called. They would not hear. So when they call, I'll not hear. I want to read this. You're just talking about them. Read this out of out of uh, Nehemiah chapter 13. It's on this. They use this in the part of the definition of contend here in the Webster Dictionary. I'm just going to read some of this. On that day, they read chapter 13, Nehemiah. They read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people. Okay, they're reading the word of the word of, word of the Lord. And therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever, because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Baalim against them, that he should curse them. Howbeit our God turned the curse into a blessing. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all that all the mixed multitude okay all the mixed multitude they separated from Israel okay that's what they did and before this Eliab the priest having oversight of the chamber of the house of our God this was at the time they were building the second temple was allied unto Tobiah Tobiah and he had prepared for him a great chamber where aforetime they laid the meat offerings, the frankincense, the vessels, and tithes of the corn, the new wine, the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites, and the singers and the porters and the offerings of the priests. But in all this time was not I at Jerusalem, for in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave of the king. And I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Eliab, Eliashib, did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. And it grieved me sore. Therefore, I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. Okay? Nehemiah was away. When he came back, he saw this guy did this wrong. He did this and he's letting this guy Tobiah come in. Okay? And what did he do? Oh, would you please leave? No, he went in there and got all of his stuff and threw it out in the street, okay? That's what he did. Right. That's what it says, okay? And it grieved me sore, therefore I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers, and thither brought I again the vessels of the house of God. Now, what does that With say the meat you? offering and the frankincense, what does okay? What that say? Yeah. <clears throat> you got to make a separation. Mm-hmm. You can't, I mean, I'm telling you right now, make that separation. It's not going to kill you. I'm telling you what it's going to do. It's going to open up the windows of heaven to you. Hallelujah. You're going to be more hearing the Lord's voice clearer as you separate from those who do not want to earnestly contend for the faith. They do not believe the truth of the word of God or whatever the case may be. Okay. It might be one little thing that you and a brother or a sister have a disagreement about. But the Word of God settles the disagreement, okay? The Word of God settles the disagreement. But what do they do? A lot of people in the faith today, they say they're in the faith. They say, well, you can't really rely upon the Word. You have to have just the Spirit, okay? And I say no to that because the Holy Spirit will never contradict His Word. Nope. Never, never, never. He's the Spirit of truth. And, you know, what does that say, that thing that you just read, that example? What does that say? Now, if if what was going on was not a tainted thing that could poison and taint, why would they throw all this stuff out and then cleanse where he was? Do you see what an example that is? 
the Lord says, come out of her, my people. Amen. And I'm telling separate. you, it's a more serious now than it ever has been. That's right. That's than right. it ever has been that God is saying <coughs> that. And he's not going to take no excuse look, 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 from any of look, us. Look what happens because they let this Tobiah in. Because Tobiah was one that came against Nehemiah, trying to disrupt the work, remember? Yeah, okay. yeah. And they gave him a chamber right there. Oh. They, they gave him a chamber while Nehemiah was away. Mm. Nehemiah threw his stuff out. Listen to this. And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. See? The Levites, it was command and law of Moses, they were to be supplied by the people. See, the Levites, they ministered unto God. They ministered to God for the people. And the people came to the Levites to hear what the Lord was saying. You see what I'm saying? This is how it was in the Old Testament times. So who was interfering with that? This guy they brought yeah, in? Yeah, Tobiah. Yeah, wow. and they, they were, because that influence was there. You wow. see what I'm saying? And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them, for the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled every one to his field. Okay. Then contended I with the rulers and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? Mm. And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then See brought... what that God <clears throat> caused? <clears throat> See what him, them bringing him in and embracing right. him? He was coming against Nehemiah. That's right. And you know, coming against the work and, of God. And, and he, came up in, he came in while Nehemiah was gone. <clears throat> what a sneaky <clears throat> kind of deal that was. Right. That's the devil, man. That's the devil. I'm telling you. And so then this guy interferes with everything. He interferes with the priests getting what they're supposed to get because of his influence. Okay. Wow, that is so I know, I know, I know. major. But see what he says here. Now, Nehemiah is speaking. Then contended I with the rulers and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasuries see and i made treasurers over the treasuries see the the levites were set apart by god there on the mount when moses came down they had built the golden calf god set apart the levites for his ministry for his self okay to attend to his things all right and they were they didn't get no land the levites were scattered throughout the land okay they were in every every tribe the levites were and they were commanded, people were commanded to bring the tenth into the temple, okay, or into the place of, you know, wherever it was, bring the tenth in, and that tenth went to the Levites. It went to their families. They lived off that tenth. You see what I'm saying? This is, this is the principle of God, okay? And I'm telling you right now, when that principle was violated, Nehemiah stood up and said, no! We're going to go by what God says in his word. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? And he kicked the guy out that was causing exactly, the problem. Exactly. And then you come over to the New Testament. And here you have the book of Jude. Okay. And these people have come in. And they're, they're saying, you don't have to take up your cross. You don't have to do this. That's too hard. You need to be circumcised. You need to do this and that. You know, keep the law of Moses. You know, do this and that. The Judaizers. Okay. These false the outward. Teachers, right. You have to do the yeah. outward. But don't worry about that inward, you know, thing. But because, see, that's that's not necessary. But it is necessary. That's what Paul taught. That's what Jesus taught. That's what, you know, Peter, all of them taught this, okay? Beginning with the Lord. What did he say? I preach <clears throat> Jesus and him crucified. Him crucified. Hallelujah. Well, what is that? That's the cross. Amen. See? That's the cross walk. That's what and he preached. What, what did he say? Paul said, I'm crucified unto the world, and the world's crucified unto me. We read it the other day, I think it was Friday, you know, that the Lord's, it, the preaching of the cross, the word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the what? Power of God, the dynamite of God, the word of the cross. Hallelujah. Dynamos. I mean it, boy. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, look at this. Number four here on the definition of contend, to reprove sharply to try to strive to convince and reclaim and reclaim mm -hmm. see you're seeing a little sheep over here being devoured by the false teacher you go over to that false teacher maybe you're at a park and you start hearing people talking about the lord and you see this young person you know maybe 16 or 17 and they're listening you know and the guys the young person's dad is standing there listening to this guy and he's a false teacher and he's just rattling on and on and on and on and on. 
and the dad's not saying nothing, and nobody else is saying anything. Everybody's standing around listening to this guy. They're looking at each other. You can tell they don't believe what the guy is saying, but nobody's opening their mouth. Hmm? Well, that's where you step in as a believer. See? You go over and say, now, brother, I just heard you say such and such and such and such. But let me tell you something. The Word of God says this, 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 and this. You are absolutely wrong. See? I don't know if I'd call him a brother. Well, I'm, you know you know what I mean. <laughs> sir. Oh, you want to call yeah. him sir? Or idiot? Uh, <laughs> false teacher? Huh? Call him whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. Just say, hey, I got something to say to you. Maybe that'd be the best thing to do. See? Mm -hmm. Hey, I got something to say to you. Okay? I don't think God wants us to disrespect disrespect people. Okay? But that's what they say you're doing when you're talking to them in a sharp way. That's what they say you're doing when you're contending for the faith. You're disrespecting them. No, I'm not. Because if I don't talk to them and tell them the truth, I'm disrespecting God. Well, the I'm blood's disrespecting on your hands His word. Too. That's right. That's right. Yeah. The blood's on your hands. Look at number five. To strive in opposition. That's what contend means. To punish. Okay? And then it says, The Lord called to contend by fire. Let's see? Ooh, Amos chapter 7. And then number six, to quarrel, to dispute fiercely, to wrangle. The parties contend about trifles, okay? I'm telling you right now, we need to earnestly contend for the faith today and throughout this whole 2019 and beyond because the faith is going to stand. The faith of the Lord Jesus Christ stands. It is not moved by this politically correct world. It's not moved by politicians. It is not moved by the devil. It's not moved by the Pope. It's not moved by anybody, anywhere. The faith of Jesus Christ stands. Now, the Lord asks us, will you stand with my faith? Will you stand with me? Will you let me use you and battle through you for the faith? That I am, hallelujah, mm -hmm. see, hallelujah. and I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way, amen, hallelujah. I want to read at <coughs> verse 4 here. Okay. For there, now see, we were just talking about that example you gave with that guy coming in and all the problems he caused. Right, 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 Tobiah. Okay, yeah. for there were certain men crept in unawares, Okay. They settled in alongside. Mm -mm -mm. They lodged stealthily. Just exactly what that guy did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did he do? He came in first of all when uh, the man of authority was gone. Right, right. Okay. And he came in that way and got a lodging place in there, didn't he? Very stealthily, very sneakily. Behind the scenes, man. Type now of that deal. that is, I mean, Tobiah wow. was Tobiah was not of the Lord, and they gave this guy a chamber on the side of the temple. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Well, obviously, he deceived them. Yes, into thinking he was, you know, of the Lord or whatever, <sighs> and so he came in, and and the Bible talks about this. For there were certain men crept in; they yeah, crept in. in. Like a snake unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So these men came in unawares. You know, and and what happens when they come in? Unawares, what happens? Error. Heresy. I want you to read this. I'm going to read this here. Chapter 2, verse 9 of Nehemiah. Okay. He was sent by our exerces to go build the wall of Jerusalem. Okay. Then... Then I came, he came with this, with this letter from the, from the king. Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. So Nehemiah, he had some backup. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, he was an Ammonite, okay, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly and there were come that there were 
there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. Oh, I'm telling you, man, God's given us a word here today. Mm -hmm. See, there are some of us, we are commanded to seek the welfare, all of us really, the welfare of God's people. We're commanded. When we see the enemy, the Ammonite, that evil spirit of Ammon, okay, which is an uh, incestual spirit, see what I'm saying? It's, it's like people agree with the devil, okay? See, the Ammonites and the Moabites were born from incest, okay? Lot and his two daughters. And so, in the spirit, we've got to think about this. Same Lord. thing. Same thing, mm -hmm. see? It's the spirit of this age come in, and it's the church has let it in, and now it's ruling. It's ruling. Mm. The church has given it a place inside the temple, so to speak. And you see how people, from within. I mean, we know lots of good mm -hmm. people, okay? We really do. A lot of people, and you, you look at them, you look at their life, oh, they're good people, you know? They don't have it in their heart to thieve you or do anything like that to do any against you. But then when you bring the truth of the Word of God, the, the cross to them, what do you get? You get this bucking up thing. What is, that's this Tobias spirit. That's this spirit of the age that disagrees with, with the word of God. With the truth. With the truth. Mm -hmm. See? They only take it so far. It's like you've got this gigantic, beautiful cake. Okay? Beautiful cake. You make a beautiful cake. Sharon made a cake a couple of weeks ago. It was beautiful. Wonderful. <laughs> From scratch. It was really good. Okay? You got this big, beautiful cake. And to enjoy the cake, you have to consume the cake. Right? You don't just consume a little part of the icing and say oh that was a beautiful cake no you that was the icing you see what I'm saying and today people want the icing they don't want all the cake okay maybe cakes a bad analogy let's talk about a big lasagna how about that <laughs> all right with all the goodies inside see you got all the olives and Sharon makes a mean lasagna I'm telling you it's, it's got olives and meat and everything in it she don't make it but once every two three years probably. <laughs> but when she makes it, it's good, good, good. But I don't sit there and just take the noodle off the top and eat it. No, what do I do? Dive in and get the whole thing. Right what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what God wants to do with his word. That's how Jesus wants us to walk, believe the whole truth. Walk in that way, okay? But the church of today, well, they don't want that, do they? They'll take the icing, right? Or they maybe they'll take the olives out of the lasagna and eat that, you see? But when you come and bring the whole thing, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. They were trying to stop Nehemiah, right? Tobiah, Sambalat, mm -hmm. they were trying to stop him, stop him, stop him. It's going Interfere on today. Interfere with the word See? of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but Nehemiah was set up by God. He was chosen by God. Okay. He was taken captive. I mean, Nehemiah. And then, <clears throat> Nehemiah, what a man of God. I got holy bumps. He was made a servant to the king. God had him, had him put right there. I mean, he was serving to the king. And then he was all grieved. He heard about the destruction and everything. His head was all down. And the king said, what's the matter? He said, oh, man, my my nation's in disarray. My The city of my father's is destroyed. And the wall is crushed down. And they need some help. And the king says, hey, go help them, man. I'll give you everything you need to go help them. That was God working through the king, see. And so he went. He had letters. He had he had. The army was with him. Hey, you know, <laughs> get out of my way. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> this is how God works. God will help you along the way. You see? I know we've we've had these things the Lord has shown us over the years. We've been ministering on the internet since 2007 and ministering together since we were married in 95 on shortwave from 2000. So we've been ministering out in the world, but sometimes we'll get these impressions from the Lord know that he wants to do certain things and we're like lord win 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 right mm -hmm. and it's like and these certain things we know the lord wants to do it takes resources to do them in this natural realm okay but god says never fear right mm -hmm. i'll take care of it mm -hmm. and so we just keep pressing on pressing on <laughs> we're not going to waste what god has given us in the ability he's given us to bring forth the truth of god's word the way he has us bring it forth Right. We're going to go anywhere, do anything, say what he tells us to say. Right. And in this time, you know, it's <coughs> like it, it's an exciting time for God's people. 
I feel an excitement coming yes. into 2019. Amen, amen. I was reading the word this morning. I just feel an excitement coming into 2019 because God's going to do some wonderful things. That's right. In this hour, you know, it's going to be, we've said it before, awesome for the true people, people of God walking in the correct way. That's right. But it's going to be destruction for the wicked. And I believe we're going to see you know, a lot of Christians. We're going to see so much this year. We're going to year. see people set free from this political correctness. We're going to see them set free from this this bondage of, uh, you know, just being all like a limp noodle. And you know get what some I mean? boldness. Yeah, some boldness and some contending going on. Spirit Hallelujah. of God. Amen. Amen. You know, get some boldness going on. Fearlessness going on. That's right. Without fear of man. That's right. You know... The Lord's showing us, you know, coming into this year even, you know, he's been having us do some stuff. And man, when when we begin to do it, we're kick, we're automatically kicked into warfare mode. Hallelujah. Automatically, <laughs> we can sense like the host of heaven are going with us. Amen. You know, it's like a major kicking in to warfare mode. That's right. That God Hallelujah. is stampling, trampling, 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 down trampling. the enemy. <laughs> Crushing down the so enemy. you know it's uh we can either take on the spirit of this age or we can take on the spirit of the almighty god and i prefer the you almighty know? god to this age hallelujah. so uh you got a choice oh hallelujah and you got a choice coming into 2019 i mean i'm excited i've got an excitement in my spirit because god is such a mighty god and he's going to do some wonderful, mighty things. We're going to see things this year, I believe, that people cannot say, Oh, well, the heart did it, or this did it, <laughs> or some machine did it. They're going to know that God, God did Almighty it. Hallelujah. did it. Almighty God. Amen. See? Praise God. They're not going to be able to blame the, the the heart machine on the clouds or the weather or this or that or blah, blah, blah. That's right. They're going to have to bow to the Almighty God That's and right. say, That's right. God. Yeah, Almighty God did, did this. Hallelujah. You know, what right. did they say? They were afraid of the children of Israel. Why? Because why did they say they were afraid? Because they knew that they had the God that did all these miracles for them. Right. Amen. So they trembled when those people came around. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. I just really. Oh, praise God. God is I'm just so you. good. Okay, what does the enemy do? Creep in unawares. Right. Little sneaky sly thing. Right. With poisonous doctrines. With error. Right. Even getting into the affections of people. Right. What they say, because ungodly men have entered into your hearts. Right. Why would they say that? Because that's where it goes. That's right. That's where the error goes. That's right. Hallelujah. That's where the poison goes. That's right. Into the heart and the affections. You notice when someone's in error and they spread error, what happens to the attitudes of the people? Changes, doesn't it? It does. Changes toward those that are speaking the, the truth, truth then, doesn't it? That's right. Little innuendos, right. little things entering into the affections of people, that's right. into the hearts of people. You see what a poison that is? And that's just how the devil does it too. Right, little sneaky, creeping in, mm. unawares. Hallelujah. Ungodly men. Because whether a person wants to admit it or not, if they are doing that, they're not going to be labeled godly. They're going to be labeled ungodly. Amen. Spreading error and trying to taint the little ones of God with their error and their poison. And the attitudes start changing with people. And they start treating people speaking the truth differently. differently. Yep. Well, God says that person that is heading up that deal is in trouble and deceiving in trouble. the little ones you might as well tie the largest rock you can find around your neck and be thrown into the river because that's what god says that's right 
it's so serious in God's eyes. That's right. He's not winking at it. He's not looking at it right. in a light way. That's right. He's judging it. He is He's judging going to it. Judge it more it this will year. That's be right. judged, and yes, as time goes on, That's right. the judgment of it will increase if the person doesn't turn. That's exactly right. Now and repent. Earnestly contend for the faith, saints. Now this is a it's going to be a series. I can already tell that right now. The Holy Spirit is showing me. So we're going to continue on this tomorrow. Now you need to tell people to listen to this because people need to have some girding up of the loins okay you understand i could use other phrases but girding up <laughs> the loins okay with the truth in this year i'm mm -hmm. telling you we've got nothing to fear from the enemy from the devil from any fallen angels or any giants from Nephilim, aliens oh forget it all of what they all talk of, about yeah i'm telling mm -hmm. you you know it's all fear-based crap we are the victorious soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We are his soldiers marching forward, going where he leads, followers of the Lamb, whithersoever he goes. Amen. And we are the victorious ones. We have not been defeated. No, no, no. We are the winners. Hallelujah. You know, as I read this morning in Isaiah, I forget which chapter I was reading, but when the Lord's talking about a new heaven and a new earth, mm, mm, Jesus mm. is coming, you guys. Amen. A new heaven and a new earth. You know, in the beginning, uh, this world was different, even geographically. That's right. And I know what the Lord showed me years ago, and it's going to happen. About the, it's happening right now. There's scientific proof it's happening. Right. The poles are shifting. The axis and else. is right. changing on this earth. And the Lord showed me it's going to be changing back to its original axis, like in the Garden of Eden. You know, it's it's an exciting time we're in. It's Isaiah 65, 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, hmm. nor come into mind. Hmm. Oh, isn't that beautiful? You know, the Hallelujah. Lord, well, what's going to happen for the axis to change? Lots of upheaval. Lots of upheaval. We were looking at this uh, deal the other day about, you know, the Lord says there's going to be no more sea. Right. No more sea. And there was a, a graphic thing about how everything was together. Right. With no more sea. Right. All the land. Right. Was together again. That's right. You know, what's going to happen for that to have to take place? A lot of movement. A lot of stuff. Catastrophic yeah. stuff. That's right. Are we ready? Do we have that stability in our lives that we're ready? Yes. You know? Yes. We can't be tossed with the no. wind. We, got, we, we do We stand. have to be like a strong tree established. I mean, like concrete. Amen. Let's and I feel the Lord doing that even more right now, going into this next year. Amen. Don't you? Yes, I do. Awesome. I do. He's showing us great and mighty things. Thank you, Father. Lord, we bless you, bless you, bless you once again, Father, for your good word, your holy word, your true word. I should have known we wouldn't get through this whole chapter <laughs> today, Lord. You're so good. But I thank you, Father, for your word. And I thank you for this little book of Jude that's so powerful teaches us so much so relevant for today god your word is so relevant lord that your people would just know it lord is my prayer that your word's not archaic lord your word is not dated lord your word is living it's right now true for right now today lord hallelujah our prayer is that you spread your word far and wide lord you said speak the word and i will publish it lord publish this word today you do it lord and you crush down the darkness, dispel the darkness by your mighty light, the light of your truth. And just stomp down the devil's head, Lord, right now, under all of our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can download an MP3 of this broadcast on this link. 
You can also contact us, thekingsroad2000 at gmail.com. You can also look at this link on here. There's several other links to the YouTube channel, Witness and Testimony, and the blogs, and some archived radio, radio broadcast, broadcast yeah. and also the evening devotional which is 5 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. You'll see that link on there as well. So, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is faithful. Hallelujah. He's good. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord our God lift up his holy countenance upon you and grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you today. His name, that's his authority, his character, his dominion, his truth, his rule and reign. His humility be in and upon your life as you go forth this very day, conquering and to conquer in Jesus' name. Amen. And may you have a blessed and fruitful in the, in the word, fruitful in your walk. Hallelujah. Wonderful 2019 in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. God bless you all. Hallelujah.